Do you love sales, but you wish the process was much easier? Like, man, I love, I love the return on sales, man. I love earning commission. I love earning bonuses. I love how, you know, it's never the same, right? It's always different. Every day's different. Every day's got its own challenge. So I like the changing and fast paced atmosphere. But man, do I wish that the process was much easier. Well, you're going to watch this whole video and you're going to learn three important steps on how to make your sales easy with any prospect, any lead, as long as they qualify and as long as there is a need that you could solve, then I promise you these three steps will help take the grind out of your sales. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host. I've been a sales junkie for damn near 20 years of my life. That's more than half of my life. I've loved and studied the path, the, the science of, si of selling, persuading, influencing, and closing. I love marketing. I love the just the art of attracting, solving, serving, and of course making the uh, the income that sales comes with. But of course, I understand because I empathize. I understand that this process can sometimes be a grind, and it can really beat you up mentally. So my goal in today's video is to give you three important steps that is literally going to make your life easier. It's going to make your process easier, and it's going to earn. It's going to help you earn a couple couple extra sales per day, per week, per month, and for the entire year. So you're going to want to stick around and watch the entire video because all three steps are literally going to change your career. It's going to change your life. It's going to change the income that you earn every year. It's going to change the balance in your bank account. It's going to change the freedom that you have when you shop for the very things that you like. And more importantly, it's going to change the environment for yourself and for your family. So let's start off with step number one. Step number one is listening. That's right. Too many times I hear I hear salesmen going right in, right off the bat, whether it's an inbound or outbound lead, and they just throw up all kinds of different perks and benefits that um, you know that you have to provide, right? That you that your service offers. But the problem with that is though, is that sometimes these perks or these benefits they don't necessarily apply to your prospect. Let me give you an example. Like if you're calling someone who has perfect credit, who has who has great you know cash flow like they got surplus per month surplus is basically additional money extra money it's the whole reason why we work hard is because we're working to increase our surplus our monthly surplus so surplus is like after all your bills all your debts all your responsibilities and obligations have been met surplus is what you have left to go and splurge on yourself right after savings and all that and so listening is important because uh, if you're a salesman that just goes right in talking about, can I give you some cash out? Can I help you consolidate some debt? Maybe pull some cash out of your house so you can do some home improvements? Well, the problem is what if that person doesn't even need it, right? They don't need cash out. They don't need no debt consolidation. They're good. What, how are you going to track them? You're actually going to push them away, right? And so what if, what if also you just say, hey man, I, what if I can lower your rate? And then you find out they actually got a lower rate than what the market currently provides. That's the problem with listening. So if you don't listen, you can't do the second step. And the second step is analyze. Analyze, in my opinion, is very similar to em empathy, right? You want to be empathetic. You want to analyze the situation because analyzing is kind of like repeating it, pretty much what they told you and so if you listen you can actually listen to the reasons why they need the service why they need the help and when you listen to their why then you'll discover what they want and that's most important right because the, if you if you really understand their why then you know exactly how to sell them but you won't know how to sell them unless you actually listen to their why and so at, when you're listening you're actually analyzing and analyzing is putting yourself in your prospect shoes so if your prospect is saying man I'm having a tough time getting by paying these bills I don't have any surplus as a matter of fact sometimes I have monthly deficit and you got to really think about that because I want you to put yourself in their shoes I want you to remember how it was to be like that you might be like that right now and so when you empathize you actually you repeat what they're saying but you're you're letting them know that you listen more importantly you're relating to them you see too often times salesmen try to relate on just mundane topics like they be like oh you like that show shameless man I like it too <laughs> right they don't care about that that's that small talk is for the birds like get that out of your con conversation because 
you're not focused on the on the objective at hand and it's serving right a lot of people think it's selling oh go to sell no you're actually serving you're serving a purpose you're serving a solution to their why like they have a reason why they need your service and the objective is to find out what that why is as fast as you can and the only way you could do that is by listening and so when you analyze you're basically repeating what they what they're what they told you and and here's the key thing is though is that you want to use the very words that they've told you when I say use the words I don't mean like verbatim I'm talking about use keywords that they use to explain situations like oh man I'm having a tough time right they they, they say tough rather than hard right like and it's basically it's the same thing but when you say words that they use to describe certain emotions or certain feelings it's more powerful because when they use that specific word to describe an emotion they've anchored that emotion to that word and so when you say tough they think of it and feel something different than if you were to say having a hard or having a difficult time paying these bills right and so when you hear these words and they say hey man hey Daniel um, look man I'm just having a tough time finding the right company then you want to you want to actually write that down on the notes like right like a lot of you might might work in a paperless environment so what I like to do is open up an email and just type out the uh, the notes of course in the subject line I'll leave maybe a link to their uh, CRM file or their profile or their first and last name and then in the body of the email, I'll type out all the notes. And the reason why I do it in an email is because it won't let you close out the email until it asks you, do you want to save it, right? Do you want to save a, a draft copy of it or do you want to delete it permanently? And so that's my flag. It won't let me erase that or throw that paper or lose that piece of paper as if I were to write it on some like sticky note, for example. And so when you listen and you discover their why, it positions you to analyze. And that's what I'm talking about as a consultant. Because if you if you try and act like a consultant before you listen, you don't even know what to consult them about. You don't even know what to be, you know, um, be a, a, a professional and, and consult a solution if you haven't even listened to their why. So listening and analyzing are very, very important. And then finally, the third. The third step is super important. And again, it goes back to what everyone mis misunderstands selling for, and it's actually serving. People think that, oh man, I gotta sell this person. And when you think of selling, like you got you think you kind of uh, attach it to the word convincing, right? Like, oh man, I gotta convince this person to buy from me, so I gotta sell them. Well, actually, selling is serving. And it's a common mistake that salespeople uh, believe that sales is, kind of like when they think that selling is closing or marketing is selling. These are three different things. Marketing, selling, and closing are three different things and they have to go in a specific order in order to be successful, right? And so when you listen and then you analyze, you show empathy, right? Like you listen to, their, to the reasons why, why they need your service, and then you understand their why, and then you analyze their why and basically repeat and empathize with them as to to, as to um, you know how they're feeling, why they need to to cure that problem before it gets any worse. You're basically empathizing with their fears, with their pain, right? And then finally, you actually serve. And when I say serve, I'm talking about like you you provide a solution for the problems that you listen to, you empathize with, and now you're providing a solution to end their worry, end their concern, end their pain, end their fear. Does that make sense? And so when you serve a solution, you have to basically tell them like, hey man, this is how we're gonna fix it. This is basically how we're going to assist you. Hey man, my service has helped tons of homeowners in your county or in your area, in your neighborhood, in your state, solve that exact problem and this is how. And so basically you're just telling them like, hey man, I got the, I got a, uh, the solution for your problem. And that's one of the number one reasons why people pay for things, including ourselves. Like we will take our wallet out, we will take our debit card out, we will take our cash out to fork over to the business or the vendor or the salesman as long as they give us a solution in return right and that solution doesn't necessarily need to be you know solving a life-threatening situation that solution could very well be you know uh, providing a solution to get around like if you sell cars right like people think like oh man but I don't sell the right car I don't sell the most affordable car the most cheapest car well it's not necessarily about having the cheapest car it's about giving them the solution that they need within the car whether they their ego right and so they like the fanciness they like the leather over pleather right but they only got the pleather budget <laughs> and so you want to listen to to their why why they want your product why they want the service or why they could benefit 
you know, like what's motivating them. And then you want to analyze, you want to empathize what, you know, that you understand why they need it. You understand their why, you understand their pain. And then you want to serve a solution to basically assist them with ridding that pain, kind of putting a problem to that solution. People will pay a premium for the convenience. And so when they, when you know, it's kind of like a maid, right? Like if you ever have a maid, like I got a maid. Like we, you know, my family has a maid. They come in uh, uh, twice a month. And basically every other week they come in, they, they like spit, shine the house. Like literally, not, not spit, but with cleaning material, right? And, and it's basically a solution. It, it, it solves a problem that we that we have right so every and we I got a four bedroom house I got two two story homes so both levels they get clean spotless I'm talking about spotless bro and this is a problem that we have because you know I'm not gonna have my wife take care of the kids and then also you know clean every nook and cranny in the house and so we pay that premium for that convenience for that peace of mind and so people operate the same exact way because if you have a a, a solution for a problem and you know that 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 problem is causing pain or is causing um, a headache or it's causing loss of time that they that person can't get back and you got the solution people are willing to pay for that now here's the bonus step okay because I shared with you three steps that are going to make your life easier. It's going to make your sales easier. It's going to make earning the income that you want easier. I promise you. You just got to understand those three steps. But, but here's the bonus. The timing is super important, right? You have to have the right timing. So when's the perfect timing for listening? Right away. Right off the bat. From the very first point of engagement. More importantly, when they're talking, don't interrupt them. Like if, you, if you're right now, if you're talking over your prospects or right now, if you're not listening, but more importantly, you're more focused about what you're about to say, then you're losing. That's probably why you're having a difficult time in actually making a sales because you're more focused about what you're going to say. You're more focused about what you're going to say if they come up with an objection that the objection hasn't even happened yet. Does that make sense? Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> like you, you, does that ever happen to you where your prospect says something, asks you a question, you didn't even realize they asked you a question and you're like, oh, I'm sorry about it. What, what was the question? Like it's because the problem is that you're caught up in your head or you're trying to multitask and think about other things that aren't even relevant to the situation right like you're 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 thinking about how to transition into the sales so timing is very important more importantly when do you, when how do you time the the empathy right like the analyzation well the analyzation typically should come because when you when you've analyzed a situation and you repeat it to help the prospect understand that you've listened to them. The perfect time is right before you ask them for something. So in my industry, one of the one of the tough questions that we ask, there goes tough, right? So one of the tough questions that we ask is, uh, uh, I'm going to pull your credit. What's your social security number, right? And so sometimes we might ask that question at the wrong time because we haven't, we haven't provided the analysis to let them know and demonstrate that we've listened and we understand what they're looking for. And so until we kind of give them that quick, quick sneak preview and basically say, okay, based on the conversation that we've had, it looks like that you're interested in doing A, B, and C, and I have an idea. I believe that we could, pro we could provide the solution by doing X, Y, and Z. But let me do this first. Let me go and request a copy of your credit report. I'm going to put the information together, and then I'm going to email it to you so that way you could see everything in, in full detail. And the only information I'm going to put in front of you is worth your time because it's applicable. It's all accurate. What's your social security number, right? That's a perfect way to ask social security number, but people do it in, in order because they're not, they're part, they're just doing the process. And so they do the declarations, right? They ask for the sex, they ask for the ethnicity. What's your social security number? It's like kind of like an order, right? And, and, and it shouldn't be that way because what happens is you set yourself up for more friction. Social security number is like, is one of the most private pieces of information that you can give. And if you're asking at the right time and then you come up with an objection, you're throwing yourself into resistance because you don't you haven't created that bond yet, right? And so that's that's a good timing to use the uh, analysis approach. And then finally uh, solving, right? Like the solution, serving. Like when when's the perfect time to serve? The perfect time to serve the solution is right before you go in for the close, right? Because serving is basically selling. Right. So selling and closing are two different things. Right. So, so when you when you when you've listened and you've analyzed the situation and then you serve the solution, then you go in for the close. There's a sequential order, kind of like marketing, selling and closing have to go in that order. Right. It doesn't go marketing and closing. I mean, unless you're really, really good, 
that is some products like Apple. Apple can do that. Apple can market and then close you right away. <laughs> you don't even need it. But it's because of the brand. It's because of the recognition. And you can have that brand. You can have that recognition too. There's this one video about you know how uh, this one important way on how to increase your sales. And I talked about it. It's called referrals. Like referrals is probably the easiest converting lead that you could ever ever get. And if I remember, I'll try to leave a, a link on this video. You can click up here. And if it's not there, then you can tell I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I hope that this video has helped and uh, I got a question for you you know every single every single video that I do now I'm gonna try to remember to end it on a question because I want to know more about you I want to know how to serve you and so my question of the day is which of these three steps do you believe will help you the most and why so which of these three steps um, you know which which one do you like which one can you relate to most which one has helped you the most and which one makes more sense to you so leave your comments below leave your answer and, and uh, let me know what your thoughts are what your input is and by the way we're on our last week of the back to school special so if you're a mortgage banker if you sell anything over the phone you're gonna want to look at the bankers closer guide it's on sale right now like it's a $397 product I got it on sale for hundred ninety. $97 and it's the back to school special if you rely on sales man if you don't got $200 to put to invest in yourself you probably spent $200 this past weekend on food you probably spent $200 this past weekend on some on some hospital at the bar right that you'll that won't give you back any return besides a headache and a hangover I'm talking about a product that's going to help you boost your income help you get the acknowledgement the awards and help you be one of the top three within your sales floor now go get it there's a link below it's gonna take you to salesremaster.com which is basically a link to the university the very first product that you see right at the very top is gonna to be uh, the bankers closer guide and and even if you're not a banker you might just be a telemarketer you might just be selling over the phone it's the same exact principle same exact concept right the only difference is mine I don't have a tangible product I'm selling you you know basically just just ink on paper right there's no actual product that you get to take home you don't get to feed it you don't have to walk it right there's not there's, there's no product you go you take home wrap it up and then hand it to your wife or your spouse it's 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 just numbers it's you know what I mean it's it, it's it's weird but if you understand mortgage banking then you get it so check out salesremasteruniversity.com or salesremaster.com for the sales remaster university um, bankers closer guide it's the very first product and if you haven't downloaded the sales script still go to salesremaster.com go to the very bottom of the website of the home page and it's gonna give you um, access to the sales script remastered this sales script is fire it's gonna position you to do all the three steps that I've outlined in this video so you can again increase your sales increase your production increase your income which thus increases your confidence and increases the likelihood of you getting promoted acknowledged earning the rewards getting those free trips putting yourself on that pedestal that you deserve to be because you're taking the time right now to study your craft and I'll see you on the next video bye Talk and get to it. Hard liquor here. Rip hard, really do a hard liquor here. We can buy the boy all night.